What is up down at Sideways, you absolutely lovely individuals? Welcome back to League Unlocked. Eric and Mark here with you beauties with a little weekend teaser. Let's just casually drop the old LPL finals on a Friday because they got to make room for the main course that's going to be the regional gauntlet, of course. Yeah, the big the big dish for everybody to dive on into is going to be the regional gauntlet for the LPL. And it's going to hit mighty fast uh, the way is, the gauntlet is going to roll. But you got to take care of business. You got to roll out the red carpet for the final still in the LPL. Got a pretty nice, you know, a little bit more scaled back and subdue uh, opening ceremony compared to a couple of the wild and extravagant ones we've had in the past from the LPL, but still pretty cool. And it got us right into games. And you said it yesterday when you talked about the top lane. Would we see who's getting that Renekton? This one, it's been snagging himself the Renekton early for the side of BLG. But that's not the story in this game one. The story, as we also alluded to, was Knight playing AD carries in the mid lane early and often on the late game smolder. My guy's getting solo kills on Xiaohu. He's going bot lane, getting solo kills on light. He was everywhere. And I think the solo kills on Xiaohu, which of course uh, are happening early, you're looking at this one and going, Man, what is this champion Smolder? You know, this is something that I think uh, has kind of gone under the radar where Smolder has been able to stay. We thought it was, you know, fully evicted from the bot lane meta type of situation. Obviously, the expansion of, of eight, uh, Marksman ADCs into the mid lane and where the little buffs, little tweaks have kind of gotten Smolder into pretty darn uh, capable in that mid lane, especially into a couple of these matchups. If you just play it the way, you know, frankly, as brain off as Xiaohu did to start out this series, unfortunately for Weibo Gaming, a lot of advantages picked up by BLG, very controlled, and it didn't help things for Weibo Gaming that even with the control for BLG, any opportunity that they had to try and snag something back, ways coming through with that trusted smite to steal it away uh, yeah i mean the disaster ends with bin surviving a 1v4 just the trades that weibo are trying to make with blg they end up not getting a kill on bin they lose an inhib and then way casually waltzes in to steal the baron and then it's just the game's over from there it, it was just a tragedy you know you, you watch them and they're spending everything they can to get bin you can't get bin the renekton gets away meanwhile your mid and hib is getting blown up. Everything else is going down. Yes, it was a, a, a rapidly declining situation for Weibo Gaming in this game one. Very much taken and capitalized on by BLG to take the early one nothing lead of the series. And unfortunately for competitive integrity's sake, that carried into game two. Light and Crisp continue to lose the 2v2 matchup against Elk and On. Tarzan, listen, he's landing a ton of spears on Nidalee early on, and you think maybe he's going to be cooking something up, but the rest of BLG wasn't having it. Mr. Way included on the Zyra, as again, it's just early and often BLG finding picks in every single lane before things start to completely snowball out of control, and eventually you've got Knight on Zeri flanking with the TP in a 1v3 getting triple kills. You talk about Smolder, you want to talk about scary. You give Zeri over tonight and what he's capable of on a hyper carry like that with hyper mobility around the map type of things and around team fights. Yeah, that's a recipe for disaster for Weibo Gaming. You look at that jungle matchup for Tarzan. You mentioned all the early Nidalee spears coming through and it it's, you know, should be fantastic for Weibo Gaming. You look at it and none of the lane states are in anywhere possible for Tarzan to realistically be able to get in there, have an effect, change it up, all these type of things. We're on the side of BLG way. It is an absolute buffet, filled lobster, steak, whatever he wanted on the night because you're looking at every lane, top lane, mid lane, bottom lane, and it's a perfect opportunity for him to just step on in make a little bit of an influence, pick up some gold, everyone's ahead, and we keep this train moving for BLG. This one was a lot more dominant this second game for this uh, top squad of the LPL. 
And yeah, we're, we're sub 50 minutes through two games as BLG look primed and ready to do a speed run through these finals. But thankfully, we get some pushback from Weibo in game three. The early game looks good in mainly due part to Mr. On having a bit of fun on the Brad in the bottom lane. He was uh, having a magical journey, all right, as he started this one at zero and five. That's one of those ones where that bard is is not making a journey for for your team. He's making a journey for the enemy team. Oof. Holy cap! Uh, you talk about getting a little bit of pushback. I don't know if it was really pushback from Weibo Gaming or if this was maybe a little bit, a bit of force feeding from BLG to try and say, "Come on, guys, you got to put something into this matchup right now." Uh, on doing his best in the bottom lane, frankly been in this third game in the top side on uh, as well not really having the type of impact for the blg but what does it matter when you have standouts like knight and elk in the bottom lane when have we last seen Jin picking up a pentakill on the professional scene and it just feels so bad it really feels like you have to do absolute perfect gameplay against this blg squad they defend a baron 4v5 and then weibo says it's okay we can rush it again right away and they do get it way doesn't steal it but yes elk is completely untouched on the gin you've even got on saving Tarzan's life. He's gonna die tonight, but he gets ulti by the bard to keep him alive. Obviously, he was just looking ahead to the future saying, I'm securing this penta for my boy Elk. That's how you turn an F rating into an A++ as a support <laughs> right there. Doesn't matter, everything else forgotten, all the whoopsies, and you go, there it is. That's my dog, that's my guy, he helps me. That's it. That's the story, BLG. Three nothing domination in the finals. Throughout the split, everything else this year, this is BLG as the top kings of the LPL. And listen, the final fight, even after the Penta, Weibo's still in the game. They still have a gold lead even, and Breathe has a great flank on the last fight, but he TPs so deep by the time he actually goes to catch out Elk, his whole team's dead. And, and you're and you're watching it and you're mentioning that and I'm you know, kind of almost having to be reminded that Weibo had that gold lead at that point because yes they did where was that gold it was you know somewhat spread out but it never was at the the points the little notches that you got to reach to get these noticeable increases in your damage in that lethality in what you can operate on the rift whereas on the side of BLG you know where that money is it's in night it's in elk and they absolutely know how to hit you with the wallet and i mean afterwards you talk about them not being tested on the day all you get out of elk is a little a few <laughs> claps and the boys high five they they just won the split you didn't win week seven that's just how untested they've been they already won it in spring knight picks up finals mvp my guy has a four peat under his belt and going even deeper he's been in six straight finals to now be the king of the LPL. There's there's a difference in that reaction of, you know, kind of the, you know, apathetic, like, oh, you know, what, whatever, I, I don't care, move on type of thing. Or the way that I viewed it more so was business orientated from BLG, that this is just a simple, you know, this ain't no big leap for, for mankind all the way to the moon type of thing for BLG. This is just, you know, walking out the door in the morning for them is the way that it feels like it. They just picked up another domestic championship. Yep, just put that one in the backpack. We're moving on. This path is still taking us to the world championship. That is the goal for BLG. You love to see them move through in this type of form. Nine and one in these playoffs. That single loss coming to top esports a couple of rounds ago. Who, by the way, with the BLG win, they will qualify as that second seed. We're getting TES, Jackie Love and the boys going there. And now we move in to the LPL gauntlet. They don't even break. They get right back on the rift. And now we have the four squads. It is Weibo versus LNG for that third seed, which means the winner of that best of five is automatically into that third seed. The loser will play the winner of NIP versus JDG. I don't know what the best storyline is to play here. Is it a miracle NIP run somehow getting to Worlds? But either way, it's 
there's going to be some big heavy hitters from the LPL not going to Worlds. I think uh, short term, it probably was going to be the best option to have top esports go in to the gauntlet thing for the LPL, right? You'd have an amazing finals where Weibo pulls off the miraculous upset and, you know, and, uh, sends it off. BLG goes on points type of situation. In reality, the long-term one for everybody invested in and what we're going to get at Worlds, having top esports get that second seed is what is the best for the LPL and everyone at this point. And having a Weibo LNG battle for third is where you're a lot more comfortable and a lot more confident in that LPL, understanding that this is deciding that third seed. And then having that as that matchup and knowing, okay, well, winner, yeah, you're, you're securing your spot, but that loser gets thrown down to the wolves of whatever's going to happen between NIP and JDG. Yes, sir. That's what I'm here for. That's the drama that I want in this LPL gauntlet run. If JDG lose to NIP, them not making worlds is a disappointment with this roster, but losing to NIP, it's borderline disaster ending to summer to lose not once, but twice to them in your playoffs. There is an understanding, of course, given the change to the roster from what happened, the golden year, golden road that was last year for this JDG squad. You had to know that there was going to be a scaling back, a more readjustment of where they fall within the top order of the LPL to slip out to NIP would be somewhere close to that unacceptable line, I think, regardless of the issues that you have come across to know the talent that is still there and talent that proved and provided just the year before. Yes, sir. This is do or die. JDG, you got to show up in this. And, you know, a guy like Ruler, who's accustomed to all the Samsung gauntlet runs that we've had over the year. I'm hard-pressed to see JDG not making it. So the question is Weibo or LNG going for that third seed. And that's really just a question of, are Weibo looking at the 6-0 uh, or 0-6 at the hands of BLG? And they go, man, we're not even close to this level. Or do they match up against LNG and go, wow. This is a whole lot easier than facing Billy Billy. Yeah, that, that's got to be the two ways it's got to be sliced up is either Weibo is feeling like this is absolutely refreshing. I'm on vacation chilling out here down on Summoner's Rift with LNG compared to the you know schoolyard beatdown that BLG is dishing out every day after school. This is it for the LPL, this matchup, and I need to see with this for Weibo and for LNG, I got to see the LNG that stormed back in the LPL, not the LNG where we're questioning, you know, scouts, individual performances, nothing else is here. Give me the LNG that delivers. Give me some excitement. Give me some Kaisa, maybe for Gala down in the bottom lane as a side order. Let's get this series pop. And again, don't have to wait. Gauntlet's rolling right away. Excited for all the matchups over in the LPL. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you absolutely wonderful people. As always, thanks for hanging out, and we'll catch you on that flippity flip.